Your peers are not your friends. And apart from any organized company events, I don't suggest fraternizing with any of your peers outside of work. They don't need to know any of your business, what you enjoy doing outside of work, if you're seeing someone, how much you're being paid, the current state of your finances, how you feel about your other coworkers. In most cases, they're capturing that information with the intent to use it against you when it benefits them. Maybe they're in the running for promotion or they want to gain favor from their superior. Whatever their reason is, less is more. The less intel they have on you, the better off you will be. And guys, this is coming from experience. I had to learn this tough lesson over and over and over again. So if anyone, be it maintenance, office staff, a vendor, or a resident, asks you something that you don't want to answer, it's okay to say, hey, I don't feel comfortable answering that question, or I'd like to keep business and personal separate respectfully or i'm feeling a little socially reserved today i'm in the process of recalibrating so i can get back to my happy space i'm so sorry nip it in the bud with the exception of ronnie and maddie both of whom i'm still good friends with to this day there is no one else in this industry that i don't regret telling my business to so you have been warned keep it simple show up on time <laughs> Do the job and associate yourself with people who are going to create opportunities for you. But outside of that, keep the bullshit far away from you. Keep the bullshit far away from you. Because even if that business opportunity doesn't work out, at least you'll be able to walk away with your peace. This was a short segment of Surviving Property Management featuring your host, Satina's Platform, and I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. So I just received my conditional offer for the lease up opportunity in Raleigh. And I wanted to quickly highlight some of the pertinent details of my compensation and benefits package. So my tentative start date is November 4th. Um, I'll be a leasing professional Again, for a lease up opportunity, I'll be making $21 an hour and I'm eligible for commission on all acquisition and retention. Um, being that this is a brand new construction, I don't exactly know what the numbers will look like as of yet. Um, and y'all know that renewals are pooled amongst the team. Um, but for every new lease, I'll get $150. My housing discount is 30%. And some of my benefits, well, some of my additional benefits include, but aren't limited to medical, dental, vision, 401k with a 4% employer match. And then I can start accruing PTO after a 90 days of employment. And it states that I need to sign my offer letter no later than tomorrow or else they will rescind the offer. And rescind as in bitch null and void. <laughs> um, 
and that works because you guys know that I have my second round of interviews for um, the financial company that I was telling y'all about a few days ago. So um, I'm just trying to weigh my pros and cons before committing to anything, but this is great. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. And um, as soon as I have my mind made up, I'll let y'all know. So that's all I got for now. And I will check back in with you guys tomorrow because we are going on an apartment tour. So a recruiter followed up on an application that I submitted for an open ACD position in Durham. And she invited me to take a two-part timed assessment. And to be very candid with y'all, I don't think I performed well on that assessment. Um, and I'm trying to reframe my mindset in these moments. Like the fact that my application was even considered to begin with is a win-win. If this opportunity is meant for me, then it will be period. Um, and, you know, if she ends up inviting me for an in-person interview, then we'll talk about it in a future upload. But if not, then girl, we keep moving, period. So um, I just wanted to give y'all a quick little update, y'all. I mean, where the fuck should I really even start? I got holes that I'm keeping in the dark. I got my niggas cross the street living large. Good afternoon and welcome to another day of the vlog. So I just left this coffee shop called Summer Moon Coffee in Wake Forest. And if you live in North Carolina, I'll put all of their information in the description box below. But I was in the mood for something festive, something warm. So I got their Summer Moon Latte. And this is their 16 ounce cup. in a cute <clears throat> and I requested their specialty creamer which is made in house and I added roasted hazelnut what is going on with my voice okay um so now for a taste test yeah yeah summer moon's at their big one okay perfect uh it's it's delicious but i'm sitting here talking 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 and gallivanting around town and i have an apartment tour at 2 30 and it's two o'clock and i will check back in with you guys when i get to the property like i'm just talk, 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 talk. all i do is talk
don't know if I want to put any concealer. Too pigmented on this side. Let me... <laughs> don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Damn, girl, I need some furniture. <laughs> yeah, look what my mom is doing, child. Say hey, KK. Oh. <laughs> and look at the damn dog. <laughs> Move, King. Oh, Let me get him. Get over here, King. Watch his back. Oh, look at that. Tori can't even believe he shot me at this point. Like, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I can't, I can't. He's like, this is ass. I can't, I can't. I'll a million dollars. Please don't say nothing. Just don't tell nobody. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about a million dollars? Like, y'all should be focused on trying to help me. So let's highlight the positives first. Meg the Stallion looked amazing. I think her production team did an amazing job at chronicling her rise to stardom in a very cohesive way. I love that she talked about the regression of her mental health um, after losing her parents and her grandmother and dealing with the anxiety and depression while simultaneously focusing or trying to focus on her rap career and not knowing who to trust and indulging in certain vices. Oh, and I I love the animations throughout the documentary. Let me preface my main critique with this. I am so pro-woman, pro-black woman at that. I am so for women advocating for themselves um, and, and standing up for themselves, especially when they've been wronged. Period. You don't get to harm people and not face the repercussions of your actions. My main critique is that there was a lack of accountability. But to any of my viewers who are survivors of DV. I'm so sorry that that was your experience and I hope that you're in a better space than you were because that's not that's not easy to navigate. I'm going to bed and I will check back in with you guys on Monday. What is this? Oh, is this a dress? I don't have it all the way zipped up. I'm trying to get the best lighting for y'all. Yeah. It's a dress. Let me grab everything else and make it quick because my phone is on 5%. Hold on one second. Hmm. I don't... I mean... I guess... Once I dress it up, it'll be okay. Let me see. Push y'all down a little more. Yeah. So I got some work pants in dark blue and pink. I'm not going to try the pink ones on. They're the same pants. Um, just in different, uh-oh. Just in different colors. Uh oh. Hold on, let me let's migrate. Hold on, y'all. Let's migrate to the sunroom because like literally what the fuck is happening today? Like oh, let me see. Let me see, can y'all see my pants better? See, am I work? Oh God, why is my camera crooked? Okay, 
So my work pants, I got them in dark blue. I know y'all see the ass. In dark blue and pink. And I'll be sure to link all of these items in my description box below. Um, so if y'all are interested in purchasing any of these items, link will be right in that description box. But in blue and pink, um, I got some work shoes. running into so many technical difficulties why are we running into so many technical difficulties today okay cool and i got some work shoes let me rip them out the plastic and for reference i am a woman size eight So I got these, okay, <laughs> I got these really pretty, I don't know, are they suede or like a faux leather? Nonetheless, um, black flats for work. Do I have enough battery light to throw this blouse on real quick? Let's, let's go for it. Oh my God. This is cute. This is cute. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, I look a mess. Okay. Y'all, check out this blouse. Isn't it cute? It's a little 360. So cute, so cute. Okay, let me take this makeup off so that we can do our November forecasting. I should probably charge my phone for a few minutes as well because she's done. I'll be right back. So I did some forecasting for the month of November. Um, as it pertains to my personal and professional goals and I thought I'd share it with you all. So I did all of my forecasting and my planner. I know I write tiny, but I'm going to read it so it doesn't matter. So for my personal goals, Kinky, hush. Oh, King. Okay, so for my personal goals, I put stick to a routine that integrates well with your work schedule. Um, pay attention to what the universe is trying to tell you. And everything doesn't need your energy, activate your discernment, and take your power back. I think up until this point, and I touched on it in my previous video, that I tend to, like, I tend to make impulsive decisions and force things that just don't make sense. So... I am doing my best to relinquish my need to control everything and to do things the right way. <laughs> so, um, some of my health goals are um, to drink more water, to push myself to work out four days a week, and to do my homework on foods and supplements that promote a healthier diet. And then some of my work goals, well, well, I only have one, and that is to accept an offer uh, that I'm content with as far as pay, benefits, work-life balance, company culture, and growth potential. And then um, y'all know that I've been unemployed since, I think like September 23rd, um, so my main focus right now is to get all of my affairs back in order so that's what i have um i started filling out my calendar for the month um and then as far as my content planning is concerned um by the time you guys watch i mean by the time you see this i mean th episode 13 
oh my gosh, the team of words. You guys are currently watching episode 13. I need to film episode 14. Um, I'm going to film an end of fall vlog. And um, I think I'm going to do like a property management horror story. So I need to go on my memory bank and conjure something up because I'm sure that I can think of something. So yeah, this is um, my November forecasting. And then I put in like parentheses, baby steps. Cause I mean, in conjunction with the fact that I make impulsive decisions, like I, I feel like I like try to like, I also try to take on too much at one time. And then I like, I overwhelm myself. So I'm just like really working on like above anything else, just being present, enjoying my process and just letting things naturally flow. And that's with personal, that's with professional, like, so yeah, that's my November forecasting. And then, um, I wanted to, okay, so four years ago, I wrote this basic financial planning guide called Make It Make Sense. Um, I'll link it in my description box below, although I don't recommend any of y'all purchase this guide because I was skimming through the pages and I'm like, girl, this is so cringy and like, I'm like, a way better writer now than I was four years ago. So I'm kind of gagging, girl. But um, yeah, let me let me read the summary on the back. So I wrote, this guide is basically financial literacy for dummies. The author found a way to make everything from building your credit to budgeting easy for anyone to apprehend. Is it apprehend or comprehend? Girl. There are interactive questions that compel you to make a detailed evaluation of your spending habits. She then takes it a step further and encourages you to reconsider your circle of friends as well as your mindset about money. Two several steps she believes are indispensable for a proper financial growth. This guide is great for anyone who wants a better comprehension of their financial standing, but it also encourages readers to find ways to reward themselves without comprom compromising their frugality. This guide serves as a significant first step in attaining financial freedom. Girl, and then, pre I mean, King, please, please. Girl, and then, I went to page one and the cringe just started, it just started oozing, child. I'm not reading this. But this is a proud accomplishment. I published this four years ago and um, I just wanted to highlight that, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of times we, it's like we don't give ourselves our tens. I'm like, you know, this, this was a big deal for me. So yeah, we did our November forecasting. Um, we talked about make it make sense four years later. And I think that's it. I took all of my makeup off. I need to figure out what I'm gonna eat. But I'm, okay girl, I'm talking. Um, tomorrow I'll be studying for my interview because I have an interview for an ACD role on Monday afternoon. Um, and that's like a big deal for me and I'm so excited. So um, yeah, I'll be studying tomorrow. And then um, I will see y'all on Monday. Unless something comes up. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Been a minute since we kicked it, you been caught up. With the bitches, I don't get it, you're a star love. You shouldn't have to do it.
how are you today? I'm fine. Who, who is this David It looks like we have an upcoming tour scheduled for 5 p.m. Uh, I think we're going to have to cancel that. Okay. Are you still in? We're not able to. We're not able to make it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Oh, nice. If I can leave this with you, it's a fob for the doors. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hey, well, thank you. Thank you, and I hope that you have a great weekend. Hey, you too. Hey, Mr. Schrausch, this is Satima here. Um, I was there today. Was Did you give me the tour, or was it somebody else? Yes, sir. That was me who facilitated the tour. Okay, I was waiting for an email, like application email, but did you manage to get me that? Yeah, I sent it to you a few hours ago. <laughs> Let me fix that and then I'll get it sent over to you right now. Okay, thank you. No problem. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I need to make this quick because I have to clock in by 9 a.m. Um, up until this point, I had been simultaneously interviewing for three different opportunities. One of which I decided not to continue the process, mainly because of pay. And the job seemed very monotonous with not much opportunity for growth. Now, I'm currently taking on this lease-up project as a sales consultant, and I'm not gonna lie, like, so far it's been great. Now, I also interviewed for an ACD position out in Durham. Uh, the phone screening went well, the in-person interview went well. I really paid attention to her body language and how she responded to my answers. Um, she was very friendly. The conversation turned casual. Hopefully they offer me the position. Um, and if they do, then we'll hit the drawing board, weigh the pros and cons and pivot from there. But the fact that my application was even considered and I got this far, I'm extremely proud of myself and it only goes up from here. So the time is now 8.54 and I need to clock in. But this wraps up episode 13. I will be starting 14 on Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed your time with me. Um, if you feel compelled to do so, please like, comment, subscribe, share, and enable your post notifications so you are notified each time I post. And um, I hope that y'all have a great day. Bye. Ew, what do you mean? What do you mean you hope they have a great day? What if they're off today? What if y'all are off today? You know, it always gets so awkward at the end. I need to stop this shit. I really do. I really need to stop this shit. All right, y'all. Bye.